So hello and welcome to this presentation, Heidegger and the Lichtung, exploring that strange place where the being manifests itself. My name is Rick Serrano and I am honored to be here as part of the International Kunstverein Luxembourg. This conference is presented to you in the framework of La Philosophie pour tous, the project that we started last year and that we are continuing now in 2022 to try to bring philosophy to everybody, make it interesting, make it alive. Thank you for joining us. I will be having the honor to guide us through this presentation. Let me start by thanking um, Catherine Lebrun of Subtile Gallery, who is hosting us tonight here in Bel Air in Luxembourg. We're very honored to be here at Subtile. Thank you, Catherine. An honor to be here with you. Well, as you know, we started the project La Philosophie pour tous last year in July with a conference about uh, Descartes. Then we continued in October for Sagesse Grecque. Then in November for Ludwig Wittgenstein. You have been with us, some of many of you have been with us over the previous conferences. So thank you for joining tonight here. It's very uh, Really very uh, interesting and an honor to be with you for this conference called Heidegger and the Lichtung. So, as you know, I will try to make the presentation dynamic and quick. And of course, you are invited at every moment to make questions, to make comments. And I will be asking you also, so uh, uh, some of you who already know my presentation style and who have come to my previous conferences, you know that I will be uh, calling on you. So uh, please uh, feel free to participate and uh, there are no wrong answers. We look forward to your comments and let's get started. So let me, as always in these uh, conferences of the Kunstverein, let me share with you the three objectives that we have and make the disclaimer. So the first objective is to bring you closer to philosophy. Uh, the second one is to show you why philosophy is interesting and why it is pertinent and how it is relevant today. The big disclaimer is that this is not an academic exposition. So by no means this intends to be an expert class or lection or uh, anything about Heidegger. And um, Heidegger to be presented in less than one hour is a, an impossible challenge. So. Uh, what really matters is the third objective. I am trying to make a presentation to try to transmit you our passion about our philosophy, our, our passion for philosophy. That's the intent of the night. So if we uh, can uh, succeed at this, then the whole uh, effort is worthwhile. And uh, this is a particularly fascinating topic for me. Um, this is a, a special uh, fascinating topic, the, the Heidegger and the Lichtung specifically. Heidegger, of course, is a huge subject, but I'm going to be focusing on the Lichtung and trying to give you some elements just to um, put in you this passion, what I feel about this passion for philosophy and for Heidegger. So let's get started with some data, some... Um, very basic biographical information. So uh, Martin Heidegger, who is certainly the most important philosopher of last century, born 1889, the same year uh, like Wittgenstein, and uh, he died in 1976, both birth and death in Meskirch in, in Germany. Uh, he was, he started uh, studying uh, in the Jesuit seminar, so there's always the positive uh, intellectual influence of the Jesuits. Uh, he, of course, was in, um, he grew up in a very uh, Catholic, very religious uh, family, and he was intending to become a, a priest. But then after a couple of years of studying at the seminar, he discovered philosophy and then he moved out and then he went on to dedicate his life uh, to philosophy. He wrote his uh, doctoral thesis in 1915. In 1916, very important, he meets the German philosopher uh, Edmund Husserl, father of ph phenomenology, and in 19 he becomes a professor at Freiburg University. And very interesting and very importantly for the history of philosophy, in 1926 he writes Sein und Zeit, time and being, being and time. 
1933, he becomes rector of the University of Freiburg. And then, uh, you know, this is the University of Freiburg, just to give you a little bit of a, uh, an essence of the university. And then 1933, he also enrolls in the Nazi party. Uh, by 1934, he resigns from the university and stops teaching. In 1938, very important, he um, that uh, Husserl dies, and that's going to mark him a little bit. 1945, he uh, the Freiburg faculty questions his uh, capacity to uh, keep on being a teacher, and then he suffers a ne nervous breakdown in 46 and a ban to teach. So the teaching ends that in that year, 1946. Uh, only to be lifted in 1951, and then in 76 he will die. Of course, you will hear many things and many stories about the Nazi party. Uh, we could debate about that. I think it's unproductive. I just want to tell you one fact that for me is very important. He was uh, always in love with Hannah Arendt, who of course is a Jewish uh, philosopher. And if you want to explore that relationship, you will find a lot of light uh, in those uh, accusations. But anyway, I'm not going to focus on that because I think the thinking of Heidegger is much more important than any of the discussions that could be, dis could be created around that uh, Nazi party participation. Um, anyway, but let me tell you that uh, his most important book his most important uh, creation is Being and Time, Zion und Zeit. This is the edition that I uh, recommend you. Uh, and we will be giving uh, as a gift tonight one um, copy of Being and Time. Uh, and basically what he said, let me put it very simplistically, you know, he has said, well, throughout the history of philosophy, you know, from Thales de Mileto, who, who we have studied in the past, all the way through, all the way, René Descartes, everybody, you know, basically, basically, he says, everybody has been focusing on the wrong things. So, you are all wrong, he's, he's going to very simplistically say. He's going to say, we have been in the wrong direction. We have seen in the falsche Richtung. And he's going to say, you know, in the past, like before everybody here in the past and before we went into the false uh, direction, there was someone who really knew what this is all about. There was somebody who really was putting the, the accent into the important thing. And that someone is Parmenides. Uh, Parmenides, he says. Why was that the case? Because what matters here, he's going to say, you know, it's not to question about uh, what, uh, it's not question uh, all the topics that the masters of philosophy have been asking. What matters here is being. Really, what is being, he's going to ask. So, this is called in German, die Seinsfrage. The question for being, die Seinsfrage. So the, uh, the the question for for being is uh, uh, the the important is really what we should be focusing the Frage nach dem Sinn vom Sein. So what do you mean? So what is this? Let me try to explain it to you. So what do we mean when we say is? Like for example, in the sentence he is whatever he is an architect or he is a lawyer or he is uh, in Luxembourg or whatever. The the real question is. Not the second part of the sentence, but the real question is, what is the meaning of is in such a sentence? That is what he's going to be worried about. So what do I mean when I say I am? And let me stop here and let me invite you to try to listen to this presentation in a very active way. So please don't listen to this as a lecture because it is not a university lecture at all. This is an invitation to try to listen to what I'm going to say and try to identify yourself. So um, this presentation is very different than the previous ones that we have uh, done here at the EKL in the sense that the others, I was giving you some material and yeah, you were listening to it and okay, you could agree or disagree. But this one is really about you, really about yourself. And I want you to put an emphasis on the am. So, Every time that I'm going to say something, try to um, put the verb in the first person. Try to put the verb in the you, in the I am. So every time that I say, 
what is, uh, what do I mean when I say he is? I am in reality asking you to ask yourself, what do I mean by am when I say I am? Okay. And I'm going to give, and I'm going to be giving you just some elements, some like random elements. Try to, try to relate anything of your own life or of your own existence to this. It might make sense. It might not make a lot of sense. So try to engage in the, into the presentation. So let's, let's move on. So he's going to come up with a concept, a very important concept in his philosophy. And he's going to say, you know, we have been thrown. We have been thrown into the world. Let me, for that, bring you this painting of um, Mexican muralist Orozco. You know, this is uh, this is uh, uh, Prometheus, and uh, this is you know, I like this painting because it's like the man who has been thrown into the world. And look at the fire. Look at the chaos. Look at the turmoil. Nobody has asked you whether you wanted to be here in the world here on earth as yourself a uh, son or daughter of your parents in luxembourg or whatever you happen to be from nobody asks you right this is the so-called geworfen sign you have been thrown you have been thrown nobody consulted you nobody asked for your opinion and suddenly you are here suddenly you are here in the world here inserted in the universe i bring you this picture of um, another Mexican painter, Tamayo, just to illustrate you that you are inserted in the world, you are inserted in the universe and nobody consulted you, nobody asked you whether you wanted to be here and yet you are thrown here. You have been thrown here without any permission, without any opinion. You have been thrown into a family, you have been thrown into a country, you have been thrown with the color of the skin, with a last name, even with a four four name, so nobody asks you, and then you are here in the world. And more than that, it's not only about birth. That's gewaffen sein is ima vida. That continues to happen. Nobody, uh, nobody really asks you if you wanted to get this or that illness. Nobody asks you if you wanted to uh, become or not become that thing and the other. So the the gewaffen sein is not only at the moment of birth, but it goes on and on and you are thrown here into the world into the universe you're a tiny part and yet you are the most important for yourself but you have been thrown here without anybody telling you and he's gonna use a word he's not gonna talk about man or woman he's gonna talk about he you know heidegger invents a lot of words he's gonna invent a lot of words because he thinks uh, some words are more eloquent than the normal language that we have. So he's going to come up with the, with the word Dasein. Dasein, of course, means like being there, like being in the world. That's what he's trying to communicate with this expression. And every time he's going to talk about you or me or anybody, he's basically using the expression Dasein because you are here, because you are in a given circumstance, in a given place, in a given moment in history, in a given country, in a given economic condition, in a given racial condition, and so forth. So the Dasein has been thrown. The Dasein has been thrown into the world. You are in the world. He's going to use, by the way, he's going to use a lot of hyphens, a lot of Bindestrich, a lot, a lot of tiré no? to build his words and to explain his philosophy. So he's going to say, you are in the world. You are going to be in the world. You're going to be thrown into the world. And the world matters a lot. No, He's going to also invent these other words. So he's going to say, es ist alles welthaft. Everything is like word, wor worldlish, right? Everything is welthaft. So you are in the world and you are connected to the world. And there is no way you can extract yourself from the world. Es weltet, no? inventing this beautiful verb, es weltet. So the, it, it, it worlds, sort of. Uh, now, Heidegger is going to work a lot with um, something that we could call complementary opposites. And that is also something very important tonight when we talk about the Lichtung. Because the, the opposites, we normally think of opposites as positive and negative. And Heidegger is not going to think of opposites in that 
let, let me say destructive or negative connotation. It's only going to talk about opposites, about two sides of one same coin. And that is what I want to communicate to you. That is what I want to pass to you tonight. The concept of complementary opposites, not opposing opposites, but things that seem different, seem totally opposite, but actually they enrich themselves, they complement themselves. So like these two faces of Tamayo, so the happy face and the sad face, they, they complement each other. And he's also going to say Leben is Sorgen. So uh, life is preoccupation, life is anxiety, life is having fear, having fear, of course, you can think of what. Leben is angst, life is angst, life is fear, life is anxiety. And life, a life society is hat den Mut zu angst. We should be ready to face this fear. We should be ready and available to face and to confront this anxiety, this fear. Of course, he's talking about death. Now, again about the opposites and, then, and here we are going to start talking about the lichtung or the the clear in the forest uh, in french it's called the clarière so the goal of philosophy the goal of philosophy is the task of thinking this is what we're talking about what you are really invited you are really exhorted to do is to think to be thinking about being he said you know being the being of the entities is the foundation, is the grund, is, is the basis of everything, the being. Because the being is connected with the presence, and the presence and the being are connected, and the being talks also about the arche, the beginning of things. No? In that presence, when we, so we normally don't know what the being is, but in that presence, if we, if we really practice that presence, it will show the being. It's like we will sort of discover the being. Mm -hmm. And the being and the understanding of the being has nothing to do with perfection. So it's not something exact. It's not something precise that you can find. It's something precisely, something that, you know, the, 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 the Dasein, the, the being, is always working on, it, on his finishing. We are not finished. And yet the finishing is like the gathering of all possibilities, all possibilities of what you can be. He said, you know, Descartes, when Descartes talked about the cogito ergo sum, the, the, the I think therefore I am, je pense donc je suis, he said, you know, at that point philosophy touched a little bit for the first time the grounds of what is really important. But then, but then we lost again ourselves. And what I really care about is this being. And, but how does that manifest itself? How can I show what this being is? Well, for that, we need a lot of plenitude of presence. We're talking about the absolute idea, that being. And by the way, let me make a commercial. Uh, in our next session, we will be talking about Taoism. There's a huge connection about all these ideas and Taoism. So I hope you uh, are with us in our next uh, conference uh, for uh, Taoism. Anyway, let's continue with the clarity. So the being is going to appear in the clarity. So, but what is this clarity? Let's see. Let's see what this clarity is. So he's going to say, well, we're talking about an open, free space that can be illuminated, like in the forest, like when you go for a walk in the forest, okay? So clarity plays in the open and fights the obscure. Uh, so imagine yourself walking in, in the forest. So we call that door, which makes possible that something appears, the Lichtung. The German word reminding the French concept of clarière, coming from other concepts in German like Waldung and Feldung. That's a little bit the idea. So we are going into the forest and then you're walking there. Imagine yourself, like here in Luxembourg, we have so many beautiful places to go and walk into the forest. And then suddenly he says, you know, it's like etwas lichten. It clear out the trees. Light never creates the lichtung, but it, it is a prerequisite, you see? So when we are talking about the lichtung, we're not talking about the light itself. We're talking about the precondition the precondition for you to understand what this being is. So think about yourselves and think about when is when do I get conscious and, and, and really when do I get a grasp of what I am? What I am? What is this am when I say I am? 
Well, it is like walking in the forest, like illuminating. So in your own conditions, when and how can you arrive to that clearing in the forest? In what conditions in your life can you arrive to that clairière? Parmenides said, but you should get to know everything, all about the rounded heart that doesn't tremble with the opinion of mortals. Be ready to trust the uncovered truth. And this is the point, the uncovered truth. That's the important thing. We have talked about this, by the way, in Sages Grec. So, the uncovered truth, you will see in a moment. So, what? how do we correct our direction? If, we, if all the philosophers were wrong, and only Parmenides was right, we should ask Heidegger, okay, so how do we correct this direction? And he's going to tell us, well, very simple. Let's go back to basics. Let's go back to the Greeks. Aletheia. What is aletheia? You, you remember from our conversations in Sages Grec. Aletheia means uncovering the truth. Aletheia means appearing, letting appear, let truth appear. It's the possibility of being present, the possibility of being appearing in that clearing of the forest. Now, Lichtung is connected to the heart, Parmenides said, in a way. It's a silent place, like in that clearing when you're walking over. And there you can find an accord between being and thinking. Now, let's remember, and I'm going to ask anybody, if anybody can remind us the difference between aletheia and veritas. So aletheia, remember, is the Greek concept of truth, whereas veritas is the Latin concept of truth. So anybody who would like to share the difference, uh, that would be very important. Now, let me show you. Of course, aletheia, uh, ale veritas and aletheia, two different concepts. Um, Veritas is like the science, it's like the logic, imagine like the Roman version of truth. So it looks for exactitude, verba dicendi. Whereas aletheia looks more for a concordance between the representation, the presence, it's the uncovering of the truth, that is aletheia. So this is very important because aletheia will allow us to lighten the lichtum, to, to bring the forest to a place where the trees have been removed, where the trees are not growing, and that presence will allow us to go there. Now, keep in mind the concept of complementary opposites that I introduced a moment ago. So, the forest cleaning is a little bit like the contrary of the density of the forest. So, if you're walking in the forest and you're surrounded by trees, you're in the density, in the dikung, and then if you arrive to the clearing, it's like there are no trees. Okay, there are no trees. So what happens? When there are no trees, the light can come in. And, you know, in a way, the trees are not there because they were not there by nature, but also to some extent because they have been caught and they have been taken away. They have been re uh, retreat, retired from the, from the clearing. And there is where being will appear. You know, you need to be open for darkness, you need to be open for light. Re t take a look at the opposites, you know. It's light and darkness getting closer together. You need to be open for resonance, so open for echo. So when I'm talking to you about these strange concepts, how is your mind, how is your heart being open? Or are you still in the dikung? Are you still in the forest? Or can you allow to think yourself, what is the meaning of the question I am, what, I'm, what is it that I am? What is my being? What is my being me today, tonight, here in Bel Air, listening to this conference? What is to be? Well, you need to be open for sound, open for this dismissal of sound as well. So this is the opposite, okay? So there is sound, but to appreciate that sound, you need to be open for the dismissal of sound. So the opposites collaborate. So one thing, but not a negative opposite, just the other side of the coin, it's opposite. The formless, the imagine of nothing. And the, here you need to think nothing, not as the negative of thing, but as no thing, the absence of thing. You see, it's a little bit a, a different. See how it just, just a hyphen, just the bindestrich, just the tire, makes a whole difference between nothing and no thing. Now, we need to return to the root and look for that stillness. You need to look for that stillness. 
And that is your destiny is going to say Heidegger. To look for that silence, to look for that clarière, to look for that Lichtung, to look for that clearing in the forest, that is your destiny. You need to actively search for that stillness. Listen, because Heidegger is, is looking for the being, but he's like finding that the being can be seen in the forest where there are no trees. So it's basically making it close to the concept of nothingness. You see? Now, complementary opposites all the time. Complementary opposites. Let me show you something. So if you are still, if you look for stillness, if you are still, you can illuminate. If you reach that stillness, you it's like you find that emptiness and in silence and in emptiness you sort of find darkness think of your existence you sort of think darkness right but see how the, that illumination connects with that darkness well in a way not being is a type of being that is what i want to tell you not being is a type of being and we will get to the you you might say this doesn't make any sense what are you talking about rick what, what do you mean not being is a type of being well keep on listening keep open your mind keep open your heart and think of yourself think of your existence and then think of the first part well the essential negative creativity of nothingness the nothingness can create this is the fascinating part this is what i want to convey to you the nothingness the absence of things can create. If you take yourselves to the Lichtung, to that clearance in the forest, to that clairière, in that nothingness, you can find yourself, you can create yourself, complementary opposites. Only nothingness can serve as the authentic ground for being, is going to say Heidegger. You need to create that nothingness. You need to Take away those trees. You need to clear the forest. Being, nothingness, being. Start seeing the connections. Complementary opposites. Thinking is not different than no, not thinking. So this is like a void and what it contains. We're going to talk a lot about these concepts when we talk about the Tao. But thinking, not, is different than not thinking. You know, it's like to put yourself in white or in empty, but precisely because there you can discover. Thinking not is thinking mindlessly. It's thinking mindlessly. So it's like putting your mind, your active brain that says no, 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 is like putting it into that wide room. Imagine yourself in that wide, big room. That is the clearance. That is the clearance in the forest. That is the Lichtung. Complementary opposites all the time. Being in the Lichtung talks about the existence of the Dasein. So it's your existence. So we're not talking here something abstract, other people. No, we're talking about you, specifically you. Being in the Lichtung allows you to discover your existence, your existence in the here and today. The essence of Dasein lays on your existence. Language makes being possible. It shows, but it hides itself. It's just a moment. You know, Heidegger recognizes that you will be walking in that forest, but this is going to be like a long walk into the dark trees, you know, density of the trees, and then suddenly you will get to the clearance, but it will be a moment. It's not that you have clarity at all moments. It's like a moment of clarity. The existence of that science illuminates your substance. The existence of your that, that science means the substance. And now a fascinating, fascinating quote by Heidegger. Man is the shepherd of being. You are the shepherd of being. The Dasein is the shepherd of being. You are like taking care of your sheep. You are taking care of your own being. So what is being? Well, being, it is itself, it's not God. We're not talking about God here. We're not talking about any foundation. Being is the closest that we have, and yet the proximity is the most distant thing. So 
you can sort of get close to what is the meaning of your being and only you and you can get very close but still you cannot grasp it what is clear is that in the clearance in the lichtung you are able to perceive you are able to to recognize you are able to identify the being because the being will manifest to you man can barely touch being it's like you know it's like a very delicate thing aristotle is talking about this a little bit in the metaphysics but he's just gonna be touching a little bit on this nous sommes sur un plan où il y a principalement l'être il y a principalement l'être think of that place think of that shepherd with the sheep there you are in the in 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 a plan where être is what matters your being is what matters your being now the being gives itself the being is like it's going to come as gift by existing the human being is the possibilities of becoming this is the most fascinating part i think you are already in the destiny of being you when when you realize of your existence you realize of all your possibilities your you are a bunch of possibilities you can create all those possibilities the human beings is because but again you, you have been thrown into the world no and remember you have been thrown into the world that is why you and only you can play that role of the man as a shepherd of being and think of this concept of shepherd a shepherd is also somebody rather poor i mean it's not a banker it's not a a, a a venture capitalist it's nothing like that a shepherd is pretty poor you sort of need that poverty man is a neighbor of being it's like i am close to discovering what it is being but i am not really there so it's like a, an elaboration so every philosophical question impacts our existence if you truly ask yourself who you are if you truly ask yourself what are you doing here in this world not only what are you doing here tonight listening to me tell, telling you all these things <laughs> that's that's pretty basic but really thinking what are you doing in your life what are you doing being here what are you existing you are impacting your existence the more you question that the more you will be confronted to that the only thing that matters is that the truth about being reaches languages and that our thinking reaches that language so sometimes we can put it into language sometimes not the dasein so you are confronted with death and death is going to play a fundamental role in all of this the dasein is a being for death we are born for death the moment you get conscious the moment you start getting conscious that you're going to die says heidegger you are going to die there's no way around covid or not covid so the death sign is being for death and this is very important take also take take a look once again to the high phones the the bindestrich the the tire being for death you cannot be alone you are for death this is what Heidegger is going to say. So what is the reflection for you tonight if you are conscious that you are being for death? What is your reflection? That is important. That is philosophy. Not only telling you about the philosophers and what, the books that they wrote. Right? No, really asking yourself, what is the consciousness of being for you if you make yourself conscious for a moment that you are going to die? Well, not negative not negative that is going to open your possibilities that is going to maximize your possibilities somebody asked somebody asked heidegger so with all your theories what advice do you give us and guess what the answer was the answer was visit cemeteries go to the cemeteries because this will make you conscious of what you can be and this is the take, look, look at the beauty it's like the darkest thing death can illuminate you because being conscious of that you have possibilities you can do things you can achieve things you can project yourself conscious of death opens possibilities death is a, in a way defines time that is why the book is called Zion und Zeit 
being in time because if you are conscious of that you are conscious of time and if you are conscious of time you will be you will be conscious of your being so make peace with that make peace with your finitude Heidegger will tell you that sign is finite accept it just face it being is being finite is not necessarily bad there's nothing bad about this being is seeking that is why the shepherd the shepherd goes with with his sheep searching for the truth searching for green grasses light and darkness opposites that complement themselves light and darkness life is dead but death is also life the three classical principles of logic, you know, there are three classical principles of logic. I'm not going to bore you with this, but the three classical principles talk about identity, difference, and the third exclude. So either something is equal to something or something is different, or, or there could be a third possibility. Anyway, I'm not going to, but the three classical principles are not going to operate here because darkness keeps light within it. Light belongs to darkness, is going to tell us Heidegger. You know, it's like light and darkness, they coexist. In knowing the white, to understand the color white, one needs to safeguard the black. You cannot understand white unless you understand black and the other way around. This is a fascinating thing with opposites in Heidegger. Heidegger and the three principles, this is a mistake, he's going to say, don't, don't, don't bother trying to demonstrate things. Don't bother trying to demonstrate logical analytical things this is not about this we need to be looking for the lichtum not the light the three principles of classical logic give you light give you mathematical scientific light this is not the lichtum what we're talking about is not about the three principles we're talking about the brightness and the false brightness those are the three principles what we're talking about here is aletheia really the aletheia the uncovering of the truth concealment is the fundamental dimension of truth taking away what bothers me to illuminate my mind to illuminate my spirit and to understand what the heck does it mean to say i am now you don't need to go anywhere to do this Nicht zum Tor gehen, um die Welt zu kennen. He's going he's gonna to say, you don't need to go places. You don't need to go anywhere to get to know the world. It is within you. It is inside of you. You can do this Entdeckung, this discovery. The simplicity is an old habit that you want to nurture, that you want to promote, that you want to, to feed. This old habit of simplicity is thinking. You are asked to think. You are invited to think. Thinking will get you to being. Now, simplicity is a requirement of the Lichtung. If you don't look and practice and search for simplicity, you will be staying in the, in the density of the forest. You need simplicity to get to the Lichtung. So what is being, having said all this, what is being? Well, the Dasein identifying himself with the Zeitlichkeit. You need to identify yourself with the temporality, with the temporality of your existence. So what is being? Is the courage to face our finitude. So what is being? Existieren heißt endlich sein. To exist means that you accept that you're going to be finished, is what Heidegger is going to tell us. And what is being then? Existieren heißt die radikale Verständene meiner Zeitlichkeit. I need to radically understand that I'm going to be finite, that I'm going to be ending at some point. And with that, that is being. So what is being? Being is my transcendence. My transcendence relies in the fact that I can or not can find that Lichtung. My transcendence relies on the fact that I face the truth of death and that I recognize the time that I have from this very moment up until my death. And there I have the possibilities. Remember, 
complementary opposites not negative and positive no complementary opposites so what is being being and nothing are the same thing nothing and being are the same thing in a positive way being nothing same that is the core of our painting that you have here i thank you very much and i open it up for questions let me also invite you to our next conference on taoism and lao tse you will see and you will discover that all these concepts are very very beautifully connected the beauty of the chinese poetry will be discovered i really invite you to be with us for the next one it's going to be on the 3rd of march uh, and most probably at the chinese embassy and i also allow myself to invite you to become a member of the uh, international kunstverein luxembourg please leave us your contact data please make it clear that you accept to receive emails from us and thank you very much phil Moles, merci Rick Serrano, Heidegger and the Lichtung. I invite you also to follow me on YouTube. You will find this conference uh, published on YouTube tomorrow. So I hope that you have enjoyed. Thank you very much to the Kyle and thank you very much once again to Catherine Lebrun and the Subtile Gallery. Goodbye.